a difference. One of ten children of African American and Narragansett tribe descent of Prince Ames and Eunice Russ of Andover, Massachusetts, Eunice was born in October 1800. Her father served as a private in the army through much of the Revolutionary War, enlisting for three years in 1777 and later re-enlisting until the end of the war in 1783. He served in the 5th, 10th, and 15th Massachusetts regiments under Captains Abbott, Farnham, and Emerson. Eunice married her first husband, Robert Amos, in 1818. They had two sons and a daughter. The family lived in Lowell, Massachusetts during their marriage. But after her husband's sudden death in 1825, Eunice moved to Boston. Her second husband, John Davis, was an African-American Baptist minister. According to the Boston Daily Globe, in 1897, Eunice was of a deep religious nature throughout her life. She became president of the first independent female Baptist female society and was actively involved in her own church as well as other local black churches. Gail Coughlin mentioned in her article for the Dedham Historical Society Davis's importance in the abolition, abolitionist movement that, quote, Davis always worked and advocated for the well-being of both free and enslaved people of color. Davis was mentioned frequently in the Boston-based abolitionist newspaper, The Liberator, along with her daughters, Dorcas Ames Revelon and her mother, Eunice Ames. Davis served on committees concerning the rights of women, equal access to schooling for children of color, fundraising for individuals of extreme poverty, and organizations that help the abolitionist movement. She signed petitions for the abolitionist, abolitionist movement of slavery and a petition declaring Massachusetts' ban on mixed race marriages unconstitutional. December 3, 1896, Davis became a member of the Old South Chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution, Boston. She was one of the seven real daughters to join this chapter. Now, a real daughter was distinguished because she was a DAR member as well as the actual daughter of a soldier or patriot. This January 1st, 1901, Daily, Boston Daily Globe mentions that, quote, one of the cherished trips of the members is to her home on her birthdays. She has a gold spoon given to the real daughters of the revolution, end quote. Davis was not only proud of her father, Prince Ames's military service in the Revolutionary War, but also of other family members' service in the War of 1812 and the Civil War. On April 26, 1901, at the age of 100 years, six months, Eunice Russ Ames Davis died at her home on Washington Street, Dedham, Massachusetts. The April 27, 1901, Boston Evening Transcript noted that, quote, Mrs. Davis had the distinction of being the only surviving member of the Women's Anti-Slavery Board of Boston and the oldest female abolitionist in the United States. She was a witness of the mobbing of William Lloyd Garrison, assisted at the memorable reception to Frederick Douglass, and was present at the all, all the notable anti-slavery gatherings in Boston." End quote. Eunice Russ Ames Davis, an extraordinary life well lived, a daughter, wife, mother, grandmother, patriot, devout member of her church community, advocate, and abolitionist. We pay, we pay tribute to and honor her today for her life and contributions to her community and society. At this time, may I present the President Jerry Van Buren. Mrs. Van Buren. Thank you, Mrs. Kessler. And please join me in expressing your appreciation to our historian general for the research that she did and uh, the, all the effort that went to culminating into this ceremony. Very, very fortunate to have had her. My relationship with Eunice began about a decade ago. I had the privilege of serving as our National Society's editor-in-chief of our magazines for 15 years. And we did a profile on her to recognize this exceptional story 
of this woman of color who had become a daughter of the American Revolution and also a leading advocate for both uh, African American rights and women's rights in the, the pr century prior. I was in so intrigued by her story and it also uh, illustrated to me one of the great frustrations I have experienced since joining our National Society and that is trying to illustrate to the general public and prospective members that we welcome and encourage women of color. And here we have Eunice's story from the 1890s uh, where she is a member of the Daughters of the American Revolution. We have never asked for race or ethnicity on our application. It is impossible for us to know how many other women like Eunice made the decision to honor their patriot ancestor by becoming a member of our organization and that has always frustrated me. And so for me, I see in Eunice Davis the representation of all of the women who joined the DAR and who perhaps uh, you know, were of mixed race, uh, of American Indian descent and um, African American descent. So uh, to me, she has come to symbolize so much more than just one daughter. The poor Massachusetts daughters are so sick of me. <laughs> Each state normally has to have the President General for one official visit. Well, I came in March of, uh, was it 2020, before the world stopped uh, rotating on its axis, uh, for the 250th anniversary of the Boston Massacre. And then I came for the wonderful state conference, and then I came to rededicate the Pilgrim Mothers Monument last November. So I keep coming back. So uh, uh, <laughs> it's almost over. Uh, but when we were in the cemetery at Paula's remarkable state conference, and her wonderful uh, his state historian Caroline, who's here, would you join me in recognizing Caroline? I honestly don't know if you volunteered or I asked you about her, but at any rate, in the, in the cemetery that day, she made the fatal error of telling me she knew exactly where Eunice Davis was buried. <laughs> Big mistake. My husband will tell you that. Never admit that you know these things. <laughs> so uh, the journey began, and somehow along the way, it enticed all of you to come and honor the life of Eunice Davis, and I'm so grateful for that. I know that um, Paula has put a great deal of effort and time into this, today's ceremony and the marker itself. I know that officials from the cemetery have been remarkably cooperative in helping us to honor this amazing woman. I'm so gratified that all of you have come today in order to honor the life of Eunice Davis. I also hope that you've gathered today to honor the life of her father, Prince, who was a, a free man, a soldier of the American Revolution who volunteered to join the Continental Army. We need to do a better job of telling the stories of men like Prince Ames and others like him who uh, joined the fight for independence and liberty and might often have been denied the rights for which they were fighting when the war ended. And we have tried within our administration to do just that. I hope you are well aware of our E Pluribus Unum initiative, which is of course the national motto. Everybody knows that, right? And it means? from many, one, that was the final Jeopardy question one night and none of them knew it. <laughs> like a, a knife shot into my heart. But uh, we have always been a melting pot as a nation. The Continental Army was a melting pot as a nation. And I am so proud of the strides we have taken in this administration to do a better job of telling the story of the patriots of color and welcoming their women into membership in the DAR. So today, um, not only honors, through Eunice's life, all of the women who have joined of color, but also of our efforts to do a better job of recognizing their ancestors, their patriots. I couldn't help but notice as we drove uh, through town to come to the cemetery that there is an Ames Street here in Dedham, is that right? Yes. Okay, which of you is going to volunteer to somehow put a marker up or something? Because I'm sure that must be named for Prince Adams. I'm looking at you right here, gentlemen. You cannot escape my glare. You're right in front of me. That was a fatal error. You see, talk about fatal errors. That's yours. It has to be named for the Ames family, I have to presume. We have the Ames Schoolhouse also. And the Ames Schoolhouse. The oldest, uh, yeah. schoolhouse almost in the state. Well, what are you waiting for? You, you need to put up some kind of marker. It's a town hall now. It's a town hall now. So oh, okay. We'll uh, put something together with that. Uh, I have to imagine that it is named in his honor. So uh, let us commit that today is not the culmination. Today is not the end of our ceremony. Today is a, he's very worried now about what he volunteered for. <laughs> uh, this pallor has been cast over his face. 
let us let us ensure that from this point forward we will do a better job of telling the stories of the men and women who achieved ind American independence. All will be unveiled by President General Denise Doreen Van Buren, after which a wreath will be placed as an honor and tribute to Eunice Russ Ames Davis, real daughter, Old South Chapter, Massachusetts. Mrs. Van Buren.